I am a value kind of guy, most of you know that, it's not news, but occasionally I find absolutely stupid reasons to blow insane sums of cash on ridiculous products. I think we're all guilty of this to an extent, and you might be thinking that the 10980XE from Intel, I'm assuming that's how you say it because there are way too many numbers in that name, fits that bill, but it doesn't. If you're upset about that inconsiderate Windows activation watermark plaguing your screen, snag an OEM license. SCD key makes it simple. You have one in a few seconds for a little over $10, then click here, 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 and then here, paste your activation key, and you can kiss that watermark goodbye. And be sure to use my new offer code GSL for a 12% discount on your order. So we're gonna jump right into it and up front. If any Intel reps are watching this video, I sincerely hope you don't block my email after this. It's not personal, and, and I know We've had our ups and downs, every relationship works this way, but just because you release one terrible product, that doesn't mean that every product from then on out is also suddenly terrible, right? I'm really hoping you guys bounce back from this on the consumer side especially because I'm getting sick and tired of seeing basically the same thing over and over from the blue team. And look, something many people don't talk about, but it's true on its face. The fact that AMD would behave exactly like Intel if the roles were reversed. These are corporations, not charities. They care about their shareholders, not you. And look, for a while, we were blaming the lack of competition in the CP space for the rehash crap we've been seeing from the, uh, what, for the past four years or so from the blue team. We're on like 14 nanometer plus, 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 I have no idea. And to top it all off, now that Ryzen is alive and vibrant, you feel forced to rehash high-end solutions as well, because those are the only chips that can keep up with the higher core counts of Ryzen 9 which mind you is a desktop consumer grade solution, not an enthusiast high core count solution, even though it is a high core count chip. A side effect of that for Ryzen 9, the fact that you can run the barest of bones A320 chipset sporting compatible BIOSes. We've done it right here in this channel. And it's pretty incredible, regardless of the long-term viability of such a pairing, it demonstrates how insanely versatile the AM4 socket is. But shifting gears for a second, yes, the 10980XE is considerably cheaper than its predecessor. I give Intel that, not bad. The 9980XE was like, what, uh, $2,000 MSRP, so was the 7980XE before that. But the 9980XE was effectively a rehash of the 7980XE, which can be found on eBay for around $1,000 today. So the fact that the 1090XE is already priced at 1,000 bucks new isn't as significant to me, seeing as though this chip really isn't much different from a 7980XE. I mean, for all we know, Intel could have just sat on 7980XE samples, rebranded them as 1090XEs. They didn't, I'm just speaking hypothetically here. And who would have been the wiser? Voila, they're suddenly thousand dollar chips, but who cares because there's really no tangible improvement associated with the 1090XE. Apart from AI, which I'm, I really can't test because it's just not a practical solution for a vast majority of people. So, if, if Intel is gonna send this to an enthusiast reviewer like myself, I regard myself as an enthusiast, but there are certainly people who do way more with their CPUs than I do, um, I, I, I'm not sure how they would expect me to, to test the, the AI improvements of a of CPU other than just using a few software suites I can download online that most of you could probably care less about. I mean, sure, it runs a bit cooler thanks to solder, and sure, it packs a higher boost clock over the 7980XE, but at the end of the day, the differences for most real world applications are marginal at best. And who this really shafts are the retailers sitting on obsolete 9980XE inventory. Good luck selling those for anything near what you paid for them even in bulk. It comes down to pressure. Pressure from the red team. AMD's 3970X is one heck of a beefcake at 32 cores, 64 threads, a healthy 4.5 gigahertz boost clock, and 72 PCIe lanes. That's a healthy chunk more than what's in this right here. And sure, it costs nearly $2,000, but it offers significantly higher throughput for Fred, Fred demanding, really? I cannot read the script today, for thread demanding programs. And this ignores the 3950X, which perhaps is the more obvious choice being offered on a far cheaper platform and which boasts stronger individual cores as seen in Cinebench tests, as well as many games. These two even trade blows in Adobe Premiere and 7-Zip. It's, it's kind of laughable at this point. The 3950X is $250 cheaper, mind you, and when coupled with a decent X470 or 570 board, you could save hundreds more. Kind of sounded like a car insurance commercial just then. But to add insult to injury, it just keeps going. Intel decides to do the one thing that put a sour taste in my mouth. Above all else here, push the launch of the 1090DXE forward by six hours. I first saw the email, I didn't think much of it. I was like, okay. And then I realized that there were other chips from the opposing party 
that were to be released around the same time. AMD wanted these chips to, to compete. They wanted us to be able to include all results in one big video. But by Intel pushing this launch forward by six hours, we suddenly have to omit Ryzen results and Threadripper results because, yeah, of the NDAs we signed. And if we want to keep our relationships intact with AMD, we have to honor those as well. So Intel forced our hand and forced us to omit valuable information all because, what, they were too afraid? It's really the only reason I can come up with as to why Intel would do it. I expect they probably knew independent reviews would sway in favor of the red team. And the only real way to shift that narrative would be to force said reviewers to omit competing benchmarks over a technicality. Pretty shallow, if you ask me, especially if that's why they did it, and I imagine it. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to come up with these ideas, right? It just, it, why else would they do it? I've never once in this industry to date noticed a company pushing forward an embargo date. It's almost always delayed for various reasons, inventory, supply, all that crap. But uh, when we're talking about pushing an embargo forward, that is something totally different that almost never happens except when a company is scared. By the way, there's a lot of stuff going on outside. They're building a bunch of homes around me and I, yeah, if you hear some weird explosions, it's, it's, they're building houses. So should gamers be interested in the CPU? Absolutely not. The 97 and 9900Ks outperform it across the board, although it is close in a few titles, as do the 3700X, 3800X, 3900X, and 3950X. I've said it many times before, but games generally care more about individual core performance, you could, say IPC for another uh, variation of that, how strong a single core is versus how they do uh, when many cores are at those games' disposals. Of course, there is a minimum requirement, typically around four to six cores in 2019, but in the case of higher end CPUs, it honestly comes down to clock speed. And that's, that's really it. And okay, you could say to an extent price, right? And the relevant architecture for gaming. If you can handle the power requirements of the revamped Threadripper, I'd 100% recommend it over current Intel HDT offerings for heavily multi-threaded workloads. Programming, compiling, 3D modeling, and simulations, VMs, crazy fast servers, there's a ton of potential out there, and it just doesn't make sense to recommend 18 cores at a thousand bucks when you could get arguably a faster CPU with two fewer cores for 75% of this thing's asking price. And if cores really, really, really matter to you, then why would you buy this over a 3970X or eventually a 3990X, right? 32 cores, 64 cores, who the heck would buy this for a thousand bucks? And this again is a testament to what AMD is now investing in, core count. Strong individual cores, sure, it's nice to have IPC that literally competes on a level playing field with Intel now, but also to add insult to injury, the number of cores that AMD has at their disposal in some of these chips is insane. With high clock speeds tacked in, you get one heck of a CPU for an insanely good price. Now, what if Intel competed with AMD? <laughs> Which isn't really happening, and it's kind of ironic that we're talking about this now, and four or five years ago, it was a complete opposite. We need Intel to keep up with AMD. Otherwise, what's happening now with Intel could very well happen with AMD in the future. So this was a sly launch. I don't use that word lightly. And I really hope Intel doesn't do it again because people don't forget. Sure, there's a loyal and diehard fan base behind AMD and moments like these are not gonna change their mindsets. And like all things too, that fan base will wane to an extent, but I honestly can't imagine many people full-fledged supporting Intel when tactics like this are being deployed on the consumer level to save face, especially when media actively call them out on it. So if you're wanting a synopsis of CPU choices in 2019, here it is. Ultra budgets should consider Ryzen 3 or older Intel platforms like Ivy Bridge, the i7-2600's a great buy when bundled with a motherboard and RAM on eBay, and even cheap FX solutions can be had if you're willing to cope with, again, dead-end hardware. It's a trade-off you'll need to deal with, but I'd happily do it if my wallet was being squeezed. Otherwise, mid-tier systems should look almost exclusively into Ryzen 5 solutions. The 3600 is an incredible CP for just under 200 bucks in most cases, and the 2600, which is a generation old Zen Plus versus Zen 2, can be had for just over 100 USD. Pretty incredible. And these two offerings alone outshine any potential Intel has in its Core i5 family, save arguably the 9400F. But that's only if you're just gaming. And even then, the 3600 
keeps up with it in a lot of titles for around the same price. And remember, i5s don't have hyper-threading, at least in the desktop space. And the reason for this is the following. It gives Core i7s a much needed competitive advantage for the sake of ramping up price and separating tiers. Want six threads? Buy an i5 for 200 bucks. But want 12 threads? Buy an i7 for 400 bucks. Even though those threads don't scale in a linear fashion. And I know that some i7s now have eight cores, right? I'm just trying to what is going on outside? But instead, what AMD's done as of late is offer SMT pretty much across the board with the exception of the lowest tier chips, and that's understandable. Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 9 CPUs all have multi-threading baked in by default. Instead, Ryzen differentiates families, or chips I should say, based on raw core count alone. Ryzen 5, six cores. Ryzen 7, eight cores. Ryzen 9, 12 and 16 cores, <laughs> not, not really black and white with the Ryzen 9. And they can do that this time around thanks to radical improvements in architectural and they can pack a lot more into the same amount of space. That's why we often refer to seven nanometer, 12 nanometer, 14 nanometer, even though it doesn't actually mean what it used to mean, it's more or less marketing jargon, it does signify a radical shift and improvement in the fabrication process. It means you can shrink the die and get a lot more into the same package. And remember, this is something Intel has been struggling with for years, hence the constant rehash of the same 14 nanometer fab mentioned earlier. So look, it honestly pains me to make this video, not because I'm in fear of what Intel will think of it, I, I really don't care, I'm not in this business to please anybody, but because I know what this potentially means for all of you and me. Less variety, fewer options, fewer choices to make. And while Ryzen looks pretty darn good now, imagine how much better CPU offerings will look in a few years with legitimate, unwavering competition from both the red and the blue team. It's difficult to picture today because it's kind of been one-sided. It was one-sided four or five years ago and now it's one-sided again, except the opposite. When Haswell made its leap, AMD rehashed Piledriver. And when Ryzen made its leap, Intel rehashed Skylake. I really want to struggle for once to recommend AMD or Intel. It seems like when someone asks for a $500 budget list, I always end up recommending Ryzen. That's kind of annoying. Like, yeah, Ryzen is really good, but imagine how much better it could be if we had real, proper competition from the blue team. It's factors like price, lack of inventory, lack of innovation that keep Intel under in 2019. And apart from moderate advancements in AI to tie this all back to the 1090XE, it's still overpriced in my book when seen in the context of Threadripper and Ryzen 9. Intel, at least at this point, just can't keep up in the consumer space and even the enthusiast space. Click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below, consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one. My name's Greg, thanks for learning with me.